Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and I wanted to talk to you about getting nitrates and phosphates down to zero in your tank. So I'm sure all of you have came home one day and there's some algae, algae, we'll say it right this time, there's some algae growing in a corner of the tank. And, you know, you're not so worried about it. And then a month later, your whole tank is green. So you do some water tests, you find that phosphate is high and you run on the, the forums and you find all the ways to reduce phosphate and you start some GFO and you do some water changes and add some roofloss, these kinds of things. Uh, maybe you dose vodka or something like that. You go really, really into it. Uh, and you know, eventually your algae, your algae <laughs> goes down and uh, you're back to normal. But then you'll find that, okay, your phosphates are zero now on your your ultra low range parts per billion Hannah checker. Uh, but your coral is drab and not colorful. And now you have some stringy, bubbly stuff growing and you do some research and find out that those are dinoflagellates, which, you know, is horrible and makes you worried about the future of your tank. Um, I would like to suggest that you're not really serving your own best interests by hitting zero on phosphate. And same with nitrate, actually. You need some phosphate and some nitrate in your tank. And I think a healthy ratio to reach is something called the Redford ratio. Uh, there is a scientist that did a whole bunch of studies all around the world and did a comparative analysis and found that in ocean water and in phytoplankton in ocean water, the ratio of carbon to nitrogen to phosphorus is about 117 parts carbon to 14 parts nitrogen to one part phosphorus. So if you wanted to shoot for a target in your tank, about 14 to one nitrate to phosphate would be the ratio that I would suggest shooting for. You don't have to actually target that, uh, but note that in the wild, the oceans do have some of these chemicals in it and coral and every living thing in your tank needs some phosphate and some nitrate to really do its best. Now, most people are just feeding their fish normal food, frozen food, maybe mysis, cubes, flake food, pellets, uh, whatever you're feeding is probably the major contributor of both nitrates and phosphates to your tank. So if you're feeding something like mysis, something that is collected from the wild, krill, anything like that, it automatically has the ratios correct for nitrate and phosphate. So you could probably just stop dosing vodka or get rid of that GFO or whatever it was you were using to, to get down to zero phosphates now that your algae is gone uh, and just up your, your food intake just ever so slightly to increase those levels in your tank. Your coral will immediately look better, I promise you. Um, in my tank, I have had a strawberry shortcake acropora for, I don't know, a couple years now. It's kind of grown very slowly, encrusted over the rock, and always been kind of drab. Um, since I have started dosing a little bit of nitrate from my Pax Bellum algae reactor, I've noticed that my strawberry shortcake acropora is really colorful all of a sudden. Over the past month, it has went from just sort of this beige-ish, vaguely green lump of coral to a really pretty green and pink strawberry shortcake acropora. And I've also noticed, so what I did was increase my nitrate by one part per million in my tank. And I've been measuring my phosphate all along. And after increasing the nitrate by one part per million, that has unlocked a whole bunch of new processes in my tank that have actually reduced my phosphate lower than vodka ever did. Because when I was just dosing vodka, and I have stopped dosing vodka, but when I was dosing vodka, my whole tank, it turns out, was nitrate limited. And no matter how much vodka I put in there, nothing would grow to use the phosphate because there was no nitrate. So by increasing the available nitrate in my tank by just one part per million, I've unlocked a whole world of bacterial and algal processes that are now happening in my tank. Um, all my corals look a lot better now. And um, my phosphate has actually been reduced by about 25%. It was at 0.1 parts per million. Now it's at 0.7 parts per million. 
I don't think I really, like I said, I don't want it to be at zero. So I, my goal is just not to get it to zero, but I do want to keep a basic amount of nitrate and phosphate in my system available for my acroporas, for my Pax bellum algae reactor, uh, and for all of the other things that need to grow in our tank to make a healthy ecosystem. So my Pax bellum reactor came with a nitrate and molybdenum dosing solution. That's going to run out shortly, I'm sure. And I don't plan on buying more of that. I plan on buying either potassium nitrate or sodium nitrate, mixing up a solution and then using a dosing pump to dose it every day. Um, I just wanna keep about two or three parts per million nitrate available in my tank for my algae reactor to use, for my acroporas to use, for anything that needs it to, to happen. Uh, and it will also keep my corals much more colorful than a zero zero system. I would recommend keeping your levels around, maybe around five parts per million nitrate and then about 300 parts per billion phosphate would be the sort of ideal Redford ratio uh, for a reef system. So that's it. I wanted to give you a recap of why you might wanna dose nitrate, why you might wanna overfeed your corals just a little bit to have available nitrate and why you shouldn't target zero nitrates, zero phosphates in your reef tank. Hopefully it was interesting. Let me know what your experience with nitrates has been. Um, there are people that run like crazy stuff like sulfur reactors and all sorts of things to get rid of nitrates. Certainly you can have too much of it, but um, I'm curious what you thought. So yeah, till next time. See ya, bye.